Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Oh, Mara Wilson, your place is welcomed among the child actors that just kept picking shitty movies. Yeah, you were cute. You could act okay. You had that precious widow wrist that makes me want to grind my teeth to shards. Unless I get arrested, which is very unlikely, since it's Christmas Eve and I'm going to bed uncharacteristically early. And just in the middle of being the cute little button that America never wanted sewed on comes this charming little disaster simply known as a simple witch. Oh yeah, this is a nightmare of adorable proportions. It's clunky, it's stupid, it's as awkwardly enchanting as a magic show performed by Janet Reno. It's just one friggin' mess. I've heard of worse reasons to rip on a child actress, but I'm gonna do it anyway. This is a simple wish. So you know this movie's in trouble when you find one of the main sponsors is the Bubble Factory. You ever wonder if it's actually, like, a legitimate Bubble Factory? If so, you gotta wonder how that meeting went. Alright, people, we already know that the Build-A-Bear Workshop has had great success financing Terminator 2. So I say we go into financing movies. Well, let's see, we got this, uh, Mara Wilson fairy tale or a movie about the sinking of the Titanic. Oh yeah, that's a downer. Let's go with the Mara Wilson fairy tale! Fucking bubbles! And who is that guy?! So we start off once upon a time three months ago. You know, do you really need the phrase a time when you have the time? Where we see the fairy godmother exams taking place while the credits roll. Hey look! It's that guy we all know is funny, but for some reason is constantly not funny. <laughs> Yes, Martin Shore, for whatever reason, always decides to leave his talent at home whenever he goes on screen. I don't know if he needs better direction or a better agent, but needless to say, his scenes do have sort of a... Oh, how do I put it? Je ne sais drop de fret to them. Limbo, limbo, limbo like me, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I was on SCTV! Really? Cut to three months later, so present day, you could have saved six letters there, where we see a horse and buggy ride driver named Oliver off to pick up his kids. Oh wait, we have to have this pointless slapstick moment! Ooh wee! Ah, I bet this leads to nothing, and it doesn't, stupid movie. Looking stressed today! Just another day! There's our walking J.C. Penney's commercial. Yes, Mara Wilson plays a girl named Annabelle. And this table scraps of the 90s is her brother named Charlie. Let's just face it, Dad's never gonna come. He left us here to rot. Oh, please, I've seen more badass 90s kids out of Kazam. Oh, wait, he was from Kazam. Allow me to judge this performance particularly harshly and unfairly for that. They're excited because their father has an audition for a Broadway musical which appears unlikely, seeing how he looks and sounds like a sodomized recording of Dom DeLuise. It isn't good to be late to an audition. Yeah, no, no, it makes me too nervous. Since when is six minutes incredibly late, huh? I gotta be half the cast of a Dom Bluth movie in an hour. But who knows, maybe he has some talent. The rats come creepy now. Or a good dub over artist. It's a better thing that I do now. Really? That's him singing, huh? Yeah, right, and that's Carrie Elway's in Quest for Camelot. Even Millie Vanilli would call bullshit on this one. And for my next audition, I'll sing Charlotte Church and Josh Groban both at the same time. So he doesn't get the main role because it's already been promised to a big Broadway star, which leads to the fairy godmother retreat via no segue at all. Hard to believe another year's gone by. Why do we have to check our wands? Really, I, I feel like it without mine. Well, it's like in the Old West. All the cowpokes had to check their guns before they moseyed into town, especially in Dodge City. <laughs> and that's why nobody got plugged. Yes, it's like going to an NRA meeting and asking everybody to check their rifles. I'm sure everybody's gonna follow that and nothing bad is gonna happen at all. But one fairy godmother forgets to make it to the retreat. Guess which one that is. You don't look a whole lot like the one in Cinderella. Oh, you... You mean the whole guy thing. Can I ask something? What 
difference does it really make where the magic comes from? Indeed, as a middle-class white American male, we have been oppressed too long. Boy, this is some swell room, huh? Well, Missy, look at all the gas. Step away from the unfunny writing! Hello there, my name is Murray. So while you might be wondering why he looks like Doctor Who if he graduated from Hogwarts, Murray realizes he's late for the retreat and leaves Annabelle accidentally dropping his magic wand behind. But little does he realize not showing up might have worked out. For an evil witch played by Kathleen Turner shows up and is here to outmug Martin Short as much as she can. <laughs> a witch? Moi? Oh, you got to be serious. Do I look like a witch? Uh, well, you know... You really should leave. And by the way, yes, that is Terry Gar from Young Frankenstein as the secretary. Roll, roll, roll in the lame. I'll go. Oh. But before I do, I remembered what a healthy appetite you have. <sighs> Terry Gar and a healthy appetite? I'm going to use my get out your free card on this one. I brought you a little something from my garden. Oh, my. That is the reddest apple I think I've ever seen. Oh, it tastes even better than it looks. Yes. When has a woman offering an apple ever led to any unpleasantness in past literature? Mm. What is with you? I've got the P.E. But you were just outside. I always lose it when I get nervous. I think I liked you better when you were a dog. Personally, I liked her better when she was a honey bunny. She had to pee a lot in that movie, too. Weird connection. Claudia! I took your wand away because you were using it for your own selfish ends. That is not what fairy godmothers are all about. We use them to help other people's selfish ends. So Turner turns her into Jackie Paper just as Gar starts to pointlessly wake up. Now, nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong? Everything is perfectly normal. Hortense is flat. Perfectly normal. Hortense is flat. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. She locks all the fairy godmothers downstairs and leaves with all the wands. While that's going on, we see Annabelle and her father discuss the always classic single parent syndrome that seems to invest most children's fairy tales. Dad, remember how you said Mommy went to heaven? How she's an angel now? Mm hmm Were you making that up? Well, I believe that. You know, but I, I also think that there's... There's a big part of her that's uh, right here. Where? <laughs> no, it's, I mean, I see her when I look at you. Now, in all fairness, this is not that bad a scene. In fact, a lot of the moments with Annabelle and the father actually work okay. I surprisingly find myself more interested in him getting the part for the play and her connection with him much more interesting than anything else in this movie. Oh, speaking of which. Hello! I heard you were having a dramatic moment! I'm here to mug it away! Oh. No, no, let me guess. He shows off his funny faces and does something clumsy. Africa fast forward. We see the next day that Charlie accidentally breaks the wand by crashing into a bunch of boxes. <laughs> yeah, did you get his license number? Oh wait, he has a license number. Okay kids, stop turning my jokes into things that exist! So while drinking her dry eyes, Turner realizes that one wand is missing. The one Annabelle has, of course, and in order to rule all the blah blah yada yada yada, she has to find it. Oh, I've been in broad daylight for years! Oh. <laughs> I love this mirror. Right, boot! Get changed. Purpose? Can I have some purpose, please? The hell was the point of that? She liked a mirror, okay. What does that have to do with the story or even the character? <laughs> I love this mirror. Do the rulers of darkness just have serious ADD? I will destroy the Smurfs with all my magic spells. <laughs> Say, did you realize that the guy who did the candle from Beauty and the Beast was also on Law and Order? That's so weird. <laughs> So while at school, Annabelle tries to put her wand back together, but the teacher is not pleased with her lack of focus. The police can't be any worse than this lack of focus. It's something I have to fix. It's not our assignment. 
Hand over your toy. It's not a toy. It's a magic wand. Now give that to me. Don't make her go Matilda on your ass! I wish you'd let me have it. Oh, I can't wait to see what this is building up to! Shaboom! Fucking nothing! Come on, that's like a clown being a consultant at a pie factory! Even the obvious payoff would be funnier than no payoff! I wish you'd let me have it. See, it didn't make sense, but it was something! So she leaves the classroom and comes across Murray, who, despite seeing that the wand is broken, thinks he can still get it to work. I wish that when my dad sings tonight, he gets the part. So you can do it? Well, yes, but not here. See, the granter of the wish, namely me, has to be within a hundred yards of the beneficiary, which is your father. Jesus, this movie has more rules than a Dungeons and Dragons game. Try and see it in your head. See the Plaza Hotel. <laughs> Okay, that doesn't happen, despite how nice that would be. But we do see them accidentally end up at the Plaza Motel in Nebraska, which is not as impressive. Oh, you're unbelievable. Can't you even admit it? Admit what? That you blew it. You totally screwed my wish. I did not blow it. did too. Did not. Did too. Did not. Okay, as fucking riveting as this dialogue is, why doesn't he just transport them back? Why are they still there? Is that ever explained? I mean, we're 40 minutes into this clunker and the most magical thing that's happened so far is we've gone to Nebraska! Is there anything in this scene that needs to keep us in this location? Okay, a possible chance for death. I'm all for that. Oh, Roy. It ain't Roy. But it says on his shirt. It ain't my shirt. So who's Roy? Not a brother, Roy. Is that his shirt? Was. Roy is dead. I needed a clean shirt. Wonderman. Enchantment. First degree murder over a brother's clean shirt. Look out, Mary Poppins. You've been a whimsied. I think I'll oh. hang on to that. Oh, hang on to this. Now you just mess up, you good old boy. Can you get those whimsy out of your ears? Listen real good. Okay. Just because it worked in your one-man show doesn't mean it's going to work here. Not everyone has a My Big Fat Greek wedding. Hey! Stop right there! What you gonna do? Wave it around. Turn him into some little bunny rabbit. Do it, Murray. Turn him into a little rabbit. Fuck him up, Murray! Fuck him up something good! Shabu! Dolly in his most drug-induced nightmares couldn't have dreamt this up. Somebody actually wrote this? This isn't a fairy tale, it's a stoner's adventure doing Mad Libs! It's my favorite part of Central Park. I'd ask why they didn't just do that before, but then we would have missed out on the classic 50-story rabbi scene. And Lord knows, we wouldn't want to deny cinema that. So they find the father, and Murray tries to finally grant the wish. But then he accidentally turns him into a statue. Um, we are supposed to be rooting for this guy, right? I mean, there's making mistakes, and then there's just committing these horrible crimes of hell magic. At what point do you draw the line? I wish that when my dad sings tonight, he gets the part. Absolutely! Zoom, 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 boom! Oh, I accidentally started the Hunger Games. I'm so sorry, people dying everywhere. But you know, I'm so quirky! <laughs> so they head to where the fairy godmothers meet so they can figure out how to get their father back. Only to find a flattened Judge Doom here. Surprise! Try to keep my wish simple. There's no Just such like thing as a simple wish. If only that were true.
This spell of Murray's, it must be lifted before midnight. After that, your father will most likely remain a statue forever. You promised your what? Nothing, I just said that we'd get the wands back. Yeah, another nice segue. We don't know why getting the wands back will fix everything, or why they can't just wait for the other one to be fixed. Or why they can't just find another one. I mean, there has to be extras. Or why the hell they can't just unlock the door and ask one of the other fairy godmothers down there to help. In fact, do we ever see them again? I don't think we do! For all we know, they're just left down there, starving to death, hanging on to what little life they have! Good news, fairy godmothers, you're free! Day. But they first have to stop the audition of the other singer from going well so that their father can still possibly be considered as a standby. Uh, okay, your father's a pigeon toilet right now and may stay like that for the rest of his life. Fuck the audition and focus on bringing him back to life, you priority askew mental cases! What is going on here? How am I oh no, it rained a bit and he can still sing. That was pointless. This movie has more padding than a goddamn hockey player. <laughs> so he tries another spell to give him a frog in his throat. Literally. <laughs> The pencil sketches for Prince Naveen look more three-dimensional than those frogs do! I... But the dog lady finds the two of them and decides to take them to Turner. Boots! Any of you fucking pigs move! And I'll execute every motherfucking last one of you! So she takes them to the witch where she forces them into the most evil, disgusting, horrifying torture imaginable. I'm being slightly inconvenienced. Oh, come on, Claudia. This is so demented. <laughs> Won't anybody stop this mild nuisance? And we have a fabulous conductor. Oh, no. She's conducting now. The horror? Help me, Murray. Help you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, she jump cut to the conductor, but now she's suddenly back over there while also being the conductor, but she had to disappear for a minute, so why did she reappear back there? And... What did I say earlier? What the fuck am I looking at? Yeah, that's right, what the fuck am I looking at? Here we go! I give up! I'll tell everything you want to know! Just give me a better agent! But the brother sneaks in and gets them the real magic wand. What follows is a climax of whimsical effects. I mean, I know nothing can outdo that jump cut from earlier, but still they're pretty impressive for a first-year CG student. And Turner accidentally zaps the mirror, which somehow causes her to get sucked into it. Yeah, that was the connection from earlier. Remember how she said, I love this mirror? That apparently was code for if I zap this thing, I'll be entrapped in it for all eternity. You know what would have been more constructive and explanatory? If she said, hey, if I zap this thing, I'll be entrapped in it for all eternity. Scripts. They're not just for plays anymore. The wand turns everything back to normal, the singer gets into an accident, which means the father gets to perform, of course he's a big hit, and they all live goddamn stupid movie ever after. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, this blows. The story's not very focused, the comedy's not very funny, the characters are not very relatable, and even the effects are ridiculously lame. Granted, some of the scenes between the father and daughter work, and to her credit, Mara Wilson isn't all that bad in this. But I'm sorry, I'm just not a fan of her movies. I mean, it's like everything Mara Wilson touched back then just turned to crap. 
I mean, look at her with her couch, her modern day haircut, her 25 ish year old body, her vengeful eyes that seem to be looking directly at me right now. <laughs> Hello, critic. Mara Wilson? I heard you've been saying some pretty nasty things about me. Oh, hey, forget it, Missy. You knew what you were doing back then as a kid. If you didn't want people like me making fun of your work, you wouldn't have chosen so many crappy movies. I don't care how old you were. So you think kids should be held accountable for what they film, no matter what their age? Damn right, sister! Because I came across some interesting videos from a little town called Bothell, Washington. Bothell, Washington? Yes, of a certain internet critic who made movies when he was a young lad. You're bluffing. You don't really have those videos. Roll the film. I am Humpty Dumpty. Ah, uh, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> oh my god, I thought I had these birds! I'll tell you what the problem is. We are aliens. Just look at those performances. So restricted, so reserved, truly the epitome of subtlety. Shut up. And just look at those glasses. Only a true master of character would wear something so hideously embarrassing. You're a regular Daniel Day-Lewis. Shut up! And how brave of you to go with those braces. Tell me, was it meant to look like your teeth were eating over them? Shut up! The acne is a nice touch, too. I bet you purposely never showered just to get that effect. It was Seattle during the grunge era! None of us did! Oh, and you must have been a fan of my work. We have the exact same hairstyle. Damn you, Mara Wilson! Unnatural and unkind! Oh, and how did some of that dialogue go? No. It was brilliant writing. You wouldn't dare. Totally unforgettable. Mara, please! Ah, now I remember. I like wearing women's clothing. It is fun. No, oh, damn it! No, you didn't see that! Turn it off! Turn it off! Oh, yay, the Daily Night! Oh! My God, how could you be so heartless? How could you be so cruel? Unholy she-demon! Well, so long, critic. I'm sure now that the public have seen your brilliant choices as a child, they'll be just as accepting as you were of mine. You're a regular Daniel Day-Lewis. Shut up!